A few weeks ago, I was on holiday with my wife, Sally, uh, Ben and Amy, my four and six year old, in St. Ives in Cornwall, on what turned out to be one of the best holidays I'd ever been on. And that was in large part due to the fact that I was pushed out of my comfort zone. One evening, we sat on a balcony looking out over the harbour. The fishing boats were coming in, bringing the mackerel in from the day's fishing. The seagulls were squawking and the waves were lapping up on the beach. And I had this urge, despite the idyllic conversation, the, the idyllic picture, to pick up my phone. So I picked up the phone, I scrolled through a few emails, I had a look on Facebook, and then I moved over to LinkedIn. And as I was scrolling through the posts on LinkedIn, I found a post by one of the industry experts around the team cost to turnover metric that most accountants are promoted to measure. And this expert was sharing the 33% metric, and you'll have all have come across it over the years. Third, third, third. Your team cost should be no more than 33% of the turnover of your practice. And as I was looking at it, it got me thinking about how untrue that magic number was. Now, 20 years ago, when I first started Greenstones, that was an aspiration of mine. And over the years, I beat myself up because I couldn't achieve that figure. And no doubt in your practice, you're not achieving that figure either. And it would be very easy for you to beat yourself up about that as well. So how do I know that that 33% is almost impossible to achieve? And if you actually wanted to achieve it, whether you are prepared to do the things ethically and morally to hit that magic number? Well, I've got some statistics. You see, I run some mastermind groups for accountants and each month they report their statistics to me. They benchmark their numbers to me. So I've got their numbers on here. And I've also gone out to the market and 23 other accountancy practices have also shared their metrics with me. So I've got some actual physical evidence and numbers that that metric is not or is almost impossible to achieve. So what are those numbers? What should you really be aiming for? So of the members of my mastermind group on here, it's telling me that 52%, 52.7% is the average team cost to fees for accountants within my a mastermind group. And what you'll find is the highest is 60%, it's way up at 60%, and the lowest is 42%. Now within Greenstones, my metric ran at 52% for a lot of years. And I, as I say, I was beating myself up about that 52%. At the moment, we've got it down to 48%. And I think within the profession, sort of 45 to 52% is a more realistic number. Because to get that number any lower, to drive it down, you can only do one of four things. And those things are around team costs and obviously your turnover number. So the first one is underpaying your team. Now you know as well as I do that it's very, very difficult to recruit team members at the moment and underpaying them, paying them less than the industry average is a stupid thing to do. They'll just go somewhere else and earn the money, especially if they're any good. And you go to your team and say, right, okay, we wanna hit this magic 33% and to do that, we're gonna underpay you. I don't think anybody's gonna vote for that. It's like turkeys voting for Christmas. So that's one way of doing it. The second way is to work them harder. Turn them into slaves. Stop them going to the toilet. Stop them having cups of coffee. Stop them having chats about EastEnders or Love Island or whatever it was. Turn into a slave driver and work them harder. Now that might work in the short term, but over time they'll get tired and their productivity will go down or worse, they'll go somewhere else. The third option that you've got is to inflate your prices is to charge more than the value that you're delivering against the industry average. Now you go out to your customers and say, what we're gonna do is we're gonna overcharge you in order to pay our team more money. There's no way they're gonna wash that either. So you increase your prices above the industry average. And then the fourth, which is perhaps a little bit more subtle and a little bit more difficult for you to gauge, to lower the standard of work that you produce. So cut corners, don't bother with accruals and prepayments, deferred income, we forget about all of that. We just do the bare minimum of the job. In fact, why don't you just take the client's numbers, feed them through your software and submit them to the revenue. If you did that, it'd be really, really easy to hit that metric. We've all got horror stories where we've got transfer information from the outgoing accountant, professional clearance from them, and the information they give us is shocking. 
and I certainly don't want to be in that category. So to increase or reduce the metric to 33%, you've got four options. You could underpay your staff, you could work them harder, you could cut corners, or you could inflate your prices to your customers. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but that's certainly not something that I personally, ethically, or morally want to do, and it's certainly not something that I want my accountancy practice to aspire to.